Hello, this is my first video uh, on LinkedIn. Um, what I'm going to do, and Steve Sisler, by the way, uh, I'm a behavioral analyst and I'm an axiologist. Uh, I have clients that I work with, uh, many on retainer, um, often for a year, um, to help them understand and organize their emotions, their behaviors, their worldviews, and their sense of self. I'm going to take this time to show you how I do that. Um, not necessarily in order to gain clientele, I've got plenty of that, um, but really to show you that you do things the way you do them because of the way you're wired. Um, and if there's things you want to change, it's not easy. Um, and that's important to understand. It is not easy. And I want to say that three times. It is not easy. Um, it's like rewiring a house once it's already been built. So I'm going to take you into the life of an individual that I'm on retainer with for 12 months. Um, and I'm working with him and his bride um, to understand why he's the way he is and what he needs to do to make effective change in the areas that he wants to change. Um, so let's pull him up. I'm going to uh, pull him up in my tool the human acumen tool. So me, myself, and Lee Smith are the creators of this tool. This is 16 years of my life built into this tool. Uh, this tool is available to businesses and companies and consultants uh, to help you also understand your people or the people you consult with. And you can contact me through humanacumen.com uh, to, to inquire about that. Um, all right, let's look at, we'll call this person real person. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, there's uh, uh, four assessments in here. Uh, behavior, temperament, motivation, and values. Uh, this individual only took three of them. That's really all we need. Uh, the fourth one is adds value, obviously, but not completely necessary. So this page here is known as an executive summary page. And what this page does is it encapsulates all uh, four, in this case, three assessments into a brief overview. So why is this person struggling? Well, let's look at this. So what's the behavioral style? This person's a dominator. Um, uh, so they follow their own path. They seek new projects and challenges. Understand this. If a dominator doesn't have a problem and a challenge, they're going to create one, okay? This is why dominant people are challenging. It's because everyone around them is a victim to their domination. Uh, it doesn't mean they don't like people. It just means they dominate the conversation, they dominate the room, they dominate the project. Um, they dominate everything that enters their space. Uh, and this has to do with potency. Uh, dominating people fear losing potency. That's called impotence. Uh, they fear becoming emotionally impotent. And so they strike before being struck. Um, it's just how they do it, like a cobra. They strike. Um, they strike preemptively in an attempt to keep themselves from being overpowered, losing the advantage, and being taken advantage of. Um, so that's that. Uh, this person is a loyalist in their axiological worldview. They're a loyalist. So what does that mean? It means they're not going to stop dominating because they're loyal to it. Okay. So this increases the issue um, or the negatives associated with being too dominant. They're just loyal to it. They will be loyal to a team that they will consistently dominate uh, rather than getting into a situation where there's people that can uh, uh, handle the amount of power and energy coming from this person. So they tend to surround themselves with people who can't handle it. Um, and so they're easier to manipulate and dominate because they just tell you everything's okay when it's not. And that's a certain style. Um, this person's motivational style is achievement. Um, so their main objective is to seek practical means of achieving status, success, and control over 
their own life and destiny. And everyone who enters their life falls under that control. Um, in their self-view, they're uncommitted. Right here. They're uncommitted in their self-view. Uh, so there's a lot of emotional distance from their self, their self-worth, their cherished ideals, future dreams, blah, blah, blah. So they don't know what they're doing. Their, their self-view is, is off. So let's start looking at some of this. So let's go into the behavioral framework. And I'm just going to go to intentional behavior because it shows their natural and adapted state. All right. So here it is. Um, this is the anger emotion. The top bar represents their natural emotional position. This is how they're wired. This is unconscious, largely unconscious. They don't know they're this way typically. Uh, and then it shows the intentional change this person is making when they get around other people in their day-to-day -day life and work. So we have an 86, all right? Their natural is an 86. That's strong. That's consistent. So uh, the anger emotion is in play because it's above 50, all right? So it's in play, but it's in play in a pretty strong, consistent way. When they get among other people, their anger goes up to a 93. This is the TARP. Um, TARP uh, is a phrase I adopted from the late Dr. John G. Geyer, who basically, uh, I'd say he, uh, 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 what did he do? He hijacked it from Eric Fromm. <laughs> um, and so, uh, 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 yeah, it's a long story. Uh, so, TARP stands for taking, attracting, responding, and preserving. So anger is a taking emotion. What does that mean? When you have an angry brain, I wrote a book about this called The Angry Brain. When you have an angry brain, what happens is you see all good things as lying outside of yourself. And if you want them, you've got to take them by force. Uh, so this leads us to that old saying, when you're a hammer, everything becomes a nail, right? So uh, uh, it needs to be bashed, right? So whenever they see something that they believe belongs to them or is worth having, uh, they don't attract it to themselves, which is optimism. They don't become responsive to what that thing that they want is going to do and then act accordingly. And they don't become preserving, which means holding their own fort and doubting that that thing that they want is available to actually have. They just take it. They take it by force through this anger motion. Now, if you look at optimism, patience, and fear, you can see that none of these are above 50. The only emotion this individual uses in their day-to-day -day space is anger. The answer to every single problem that this individual faces, whether it's people, things, or systems, um, is to get a bigger hammer, okay? So, how would you like to live with this guy, all right? So, I talked to his bride, and she's in tears nearly every conversation we have, and now it's to the point where that's, it's leveling off a little bit uh, because we're working through a lot of stuff here. Um, uh, pure anger styles have a form of attachment um, uh, uh, disorder, um, and so... I don't want to get into that, but I'm just letting you know that that typically is the case with this kind of a style. So let's look at these other three emotions and then we'll move on to motivation because I don't want to make the video too long so you'll actually watch it. Uh, optimism, 40. And then when they're among other people, the intentional change is to become less optimistic, down to a 30. What does this mean? Not only does it reflect a, a sort of pessimistic attitude, um, it affects logic and reason. So the less optimistic you are, the more logical you become. The greater your anger intensity, the more logical you become. So now we have two streams of logic, and they're both strong, coming through this pipe known as real person here. Um, so if anyone's making emotional appeals to this style, it doesn't work. If they're trying to state their case 
through an emotional reasoning system, their limbic system, it doesn't work. Um, they're only thinking, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do this? That's the logical thing to do. Just do that. And if they don't do that, they don't listen to anything they're saying because it doesn't make logical sense. So these people are very difficult to negotiate with. Okay? Um, what else do we got here? Patience. All right. The patience is not in play. So this person's also impatient. What is it to be impatient? Being impatient means that you have a highly flexible brain type. Flexible brains display impatience and inflexible brains display patience. What's it like to be inflexible? It's like being made of glass, right? It doesn't bend. It doesn't change. Uh, it's extremely static in the way it works. So high patient people don't like change. People that are impatient like change. When they're ready to move and people's circumstances um, and things aren't able to move with them, they display impatience. And that can come out through heavy breathing, rolling the eyes, throwing your hands up, pacing, these different uh, emotional and physical cues will come into play where they're displaying impatience. They're talking to you and looking at their watch like, I got to get the hell out of here. This guy's robbing me. He's a time vampire uh, because my brain's ready to move and this person isn't getting the signals. And then when you couple that with high dominance because of a high anger emotion, they pop off. All right, this is stupid. I got to go. Good talking to you. See you. Bye. Boom. Right? Um, why? It's the logical thing to do. I don't like it, so leave it. Right? Low optimism. All right. Fear. This person is fearless. Less fear. Okay? So they're consistently in a state of less fear, which means they have little awareness of errors and mistakes. People that are fearful are the people you want dismantling the bomb. The people that are fearless, you don't want them to dismantle the bomb because their brain gets into a position of screw it and then just cut them all. You know, cut all the wires. It's, it's going to blow up, whatever. I just don't have the time or the patience to be dealing with this and I'm willing to take the risk. High anger, low fear are the biggest risk takers. So, what do we got? We've got uh, core dominance, pure dominance, less than 4% of the population. Uh, this is a Donald Trump style. Um, uh, so whatever I want to do, do it. When do I want to do it? Now. Are you on board with it? Doesn't matter. Okay? That's just how this person operates. Um, so if I go to the behavioral matrix, um, look at this. Demanding. That's it. Logical, deliberate, disciplined, which means I remain in a demanding position it's on purpose and it's the logical thing to do okay uh, when this person gets out among other people they start forcing everything they want remember take it by force this is taking are they attracting people to them no they don't flatter they don't impress they don't attract they don't woo they don't imagine they don't consider they don't judge they just think so they are detached emotionally from other human beings. They urge and they wish. They wish it were different, but they don't change it because this force is so strong. All right? That's all I'm going to look at within that assessment for right now. Let's look at the motivational orientations. I'm going to go right to the, emotion, the motivational matrix. Look at this. Um, Dad, gum. Uh, this is why this guy's a tough egg. Uh, look at the power orientation. All right, controlling. Um, now remember, we're we're integrating this with the anger in the behavior piece. That all works together. So I'm going to run to the power motivator singularly to take a look at what's going on. Bingo! Look at this. See this right here? These little carrots right in the middle here. This is what I call the event horizon. Like, once you cross this, you're in the black hole. 
okay? This person doesn't want to be in charge. This person needs, needs to be in charge, okay? So this means whoever they're with, in their mind, they're in charge, period, end of story, okay? Back to the motivational matrix. Um, so this is uh, uh, a very strong controlling need, I need. So when they are listening to other people, whether it be their wife, uh, their subordinates, um, their manager, I don't care who it is. When they're listening to these individuals talk about a problem or a challenge or whatever, they're not listening uh, to understand your, your plight, okay? They, never, they don't do that. Why? It's because they're closed to you. You see this sacrifice down here? Closed. Let's go to sacrifice for a minute. Look at this. Five. You're not getting any of my time. Not one minute of it. I'm not here for you. I'm here for me. What can you do for me? Because I don't sacrifice my time and it's just business. So get over it. This is how this person thinks. They're 89% conditional, which means if you don't meet my qualifications for listening to you, you're screwed. That's the end of the story. That's how this works. This is why this person's got to work with me for 12 months, because this hasn't been able to be, cha be changed in their entire life. All right? So let's go back here. So no, they're, they're completely closed. This is beyond distrusting. This is beyond distrusting. Um, this is beyond suspicious of other people. This is beyond cautious and apprehensive, okay? There's none of that. There's no support, there's no help, there's no agreement, there's no sacrifice, there's zero surrender. They kill or be killed, period. This is how they view the world. Self-reliant, I'm relying on me, not you. All right? Methodical, regulated, compliant. This person's by the book, but it's their book. All right? Um, they're doing their best to be effective. They're a real world thinker, which is, again, logic. Okay? Uh, so very logical. And street smart, which means they f street fight. Okay? This is a street fighter. Um, so John G. Gaia called this the jungle fighter. All right. Um, so this person subjects everyone around them to warlike conditions because they do the only method they understand is guerrilla warfare. Okay. So this is a brutal style, um, and their CEOs, lawyers, doctors, mainly heart surgeons, um, uh, law enforcement, military personnel. Um, uh, CFOs, CEOs, COOs. This is where you find these people. All in the controlling jobs. Clergy. All right. Um, uh, there was a minister in Ohio years ago, I remember, he tried to strangle his painter. All right. Pure dominant. Um, so uh, this is where you find these people. They're only in positions of power. They don't do anything else. And if they haven't been given power, they just invent it. They just take control over the situation and assign themselves these powerful mandates and then they take them out on everybody around them <clears throat> all right all right that's all i'm going to do here because i want to make it now we're going to get to the axiology oh boy let's look at the world summary okay this is where the loyalty is coming from um now this is going to be tricky um and so we've got a person who's very outer directed Okay, roughly 70% of the population is out of directed. Um, and so uh, I'm not going to get too much into that because it's not helpful for what I want to do here. Uh, but they, they're loyalists. So they're a thinker first, and then they feel second. Okay, and let's see how they do that. Let's look at the empathy. Now, this is really important. Um, so their empathy, clarity, how clearly do they see and understand and can appreciate uniqueness in other people 60 not bad all right not bad for such a brutal behavior type um they are generally accepting uh of of people like sure you're qualified to sit under my rule okay uh like that 
So there's a plus six here when it comes to trust. This is about people's goodness, okay? So believing in people's uniqueness, their perspectives, and their potential to do good. Okay, a little bit overly trusting here. Ah, but minus five, cautious. This is distrusting of the goodness because we're measuring goodness in other people. So to the degree that they trust certain people's goodness is almost to the same degree they distrust goodness in certain people. So this is what we call preset. Um, so they have a standard that in their minds, a concept of what good looks like. And if you don't fall into that pattern, you're out. It's just that simple. Character flaws, perceived malice, faults, potential to cause harm. They are over uh, focused on people's flaws. Okay? So, uh, only by one, not bad. So they're quick to see what's wrong with you. Uh, uh, and they're quick to see what's right with you, but they distrust the right almost equally. So if you do the math, minus 5 plus 6, you get a plus 1 here and a plus 1 here, which brings us more positive. Um, so what happens? If you fit my idea of what a good person is, you're in. If you don't, you're out. That's the way they do it. Okay? Good or bad? It's neither. It's just how this person functions. Let's look at the practical thinking. Okay, practical thinking. Uh, what does this mean? Look, in a nutshell, what is practical thinking? Your ability to identify what to do and when to do it. Okay? Uh, so they got a 40 on clarity, which is, in axiology, this is known as a 16... Uh, diff differentiation score uh, so when it comes to what to do and when to do it the clarity is not that great what does that mean it means they tend to guess uh, because they don't really know because they can't see it very clearly so when you can't see a person a useful thing or a concept or a system clearly you rely on one thing you rely on what you already believe about this Okay, that's called your bias, all right? So, uh, when it comes to pragmatism for this real person, um, they're productive by five, but they're unproductive by nine. What does this mean? It means this person procrastinates um, because they come off as aloof. So, if they don't want to do it, let's say it, they should do it, and it will be productive if they do, They'll say, I don't want to do that. Well, you're not going to get it done by tomorrow. So, I don't care. Like that. They become um, uh, uh, more uh, aloof. Why? It's because they have a competing commitment. All right? And we're going to find out what that competing commitment is in a minute. So, when I'm more committed to something else than I am committed to what's at hand right now, which is what practical thinking is all about, it's about the present it's about now, and it's about what do I do next. Um, this person's aloof, more aloof about what to do next, okay? And they're more nonchalant, which means they get sidetracked. They overlook errors and omissions. They can lose focus. So we got a little bit of attention deficit here. This is where attention deficit is measured. Two's not bad, okay? I've seen a 19 here. So, two's not bad. But there's an inattentiveness to the incompetence piece. There's an inattentiveness to doing the wrong thing. Uh, there's an inattentiveness up here to getting it done now. Okay? So, what do we got? I'll do it when I get around to it. Okay? That's what, it, when it comes to practical thinking, this is what's happening. So, why is, why is this real person doing this? Let's look at the structured thinking set. Okay, look at what happens now. Now, right now, we've got a very strong score. Above average clarity when it comes to systems, concepts. The concepts are the oughts and shoulds. Okay? Uh, when you get to the four-way stop, you should stop the car. 
right? Remember, there's no such thing as a rolling stop. There's no such thing as sort of pregnant. There's no such thing as that's sort of a square. If the four sides aren't an equal length, it's not a square. No matter how you slice it, it's not a square. So this is a very black and white conceptual piece. This is where you see politics, religion, ideas, mathematics, language. These are where a lot of our opinions come from. This is where your beliefs come from. Okay? So this person, this real person, is highly structured. This person is highly careful. This is the strength. It's 70 to 30. It's 7 to 3 here. So this is very strong, which is why we got a high number over here. So what does that mean? Their clarity is good. They know what should be done, but they do what they think should be done. And to show you a little deeper how this works, it says here, your clarity is good, right there. Why? It's a 70. That being said, you're going to be preoccupied with a strong commitment to certain ideas and beliefs or to a particular way of thinking. This person, whenever they get in a situation, they're always saying, this is how we should do it, regardless of what anybody else thinks. Okay? So this leads to believing that their pattern and process is the ideal in pattern and process that everybody else should be following. In other words, they're so concerned and focused about doing what they think is right that they fail to do the right thing. Let me say that again. They are so concerned and focused on doing what they think is right that they fail to do the right thing. Uh-huh. All right. Now, you take that and you put it with high dominance and high power. I'm in charge. You're not. Sit down. Shut up. I'm talking. And this is how we should do it. And it might be the wrong thing to do. How would you like to work with this guy? Okay. You see what's happening here? This is why there are so many problems here. And this is why they called me. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to go into the inner world. And this is going to be really telling. But before I do it, I want to go back to the world summary. What is the world summary? The world summary means how you view the world around you. That's everything outside of yourself. People. Useful things and systems. That's what axiology, the science of value, is all about. The world we live in is three-dimensional. It's made up of people, useful things, and systems, which are concepts. All right? That's the world. Everything in the world, everything in every sentence you write will fall under one of those three things. I could find all three in any sentence. All right? Now... Their clarity of the outer world, how clearly they see that outer world. It's not too bad. It's a 38. We'll call it good. But they're situationally operative, which means it depends on the situation. All right? When they get into a work environment, how successful they are going to be. It depends. It always depends. It depends on whether or not the planets are aligned for them. In other words, in this person's case, they're able to be in charge. They're able to dominate. Um, they're able to take control. And they're able to use their logic and reason and fearlessness. If that works, then they're operative. But it's situational. If that environment disallows any of those natural traits, they can't work in that environment. They'll quit. All right? Now, World perception is how you perceive the world around you. Self-perception is how you perceive the world within you. All right? The lower the number, the more operative you are. Let's look at the self-summary. All right? Unconventional. Look at this number, folks. 78. My instrument goes to 75. 78. Not operative at all all zero operation the world inside is a complete dysfunctional mess 
it's jello all right it's it's it you can't see through it you can't see anything you don't know what's wrong with you when you're like this let me say that again there are many people working right now that are assholes in their position and they don't know what's wrong with them you try to tell them they look at you like you have three heads are you working with that person or are you that person this could be why all right so let's look at that the inner world is just like the outer world in axiology people useful things and systems right so it's who you are what you do that's useful and the system that you live by your inner compass okay it's the same thing it's intrinsic extrinsic and systemic just like the outer world let's look at the self-esteem you ready for this look at the clarity how clearly does this real person see and appreciate their human worth they don't right here they don't when they look at their goodness this means understanding and accepting themselves without personal judgment minus 14 what about are they worthy are they virtuous are they good no they're unworthy they're more than inadequate this is why this person gets very uncomfortable when we start talking about him because it's all news to him he's never heard any of this he's never understood it he's never seen it he doesn't know what's in here he only knows what's out there if you don't have this right nothing is right because it all begins in here and it works its way out okay and when it comes to his character flaws part of his brain saying I don't have any of those I'm not bad he disagrees that he has character flaws but he sees there's a few that he'll agree with you on that are unsatisfactory but then you might say yeah but you're you're treating people like this no I'm not no I'm not so you got a very strong score that says I don't have flaws I don't have weaknesses all right that's that that's a problem that is a problem all right role awareness so this is who this person is which they don't know who they are and you can see what he's getting for statements here uh, you may be thin-skinned and emotional sensitive to what others think and say about you this can lead to fear of rejection and ridicule by others you may crave love and acceptance from others and feel that it may be impossible to get hell yeah when you act like you act and why are you doing that they don't know that's what we're digging into why are you doing this because we're gonna find out why right they don't know um, all right what this person does so this is their work life this is called functional value or functional worth human worth we just looked at it can't see it functional worth can't see that either indeterminate so what are you good at I don't know I don't know all right are you feeling useful no I'm really unfulfilled in my current role are you feeling frustrated absolutely absolutely I am frustrated I am unfulfilled I don't know what's wrong so I'm gonna ignore it and I'm gonna continue to go in and beat everybody up so when you want to talk about him he don't want to go there why he can't see it it's like looking through triple tinted windows what's in the back seat of your car I don't know can we talk about your car because I can see through those windows let me show you where you're all screwed up what are you I don't know right this is what's happening self-direction compass 20 not very good okay but they're still persistent they're persistent even though they can't see so this person's driving a hundred miles an hour with a black windshield okay what happens you know you get two years down the road you realize your ladder has been against the wrong house that's what happens right so this is what we're trying to avoid with this person okay look this person's in the world and they're completely lost okay what does that mean 
this person is in a directional quandary. They struggle to pull themselves together. They lack personal fortitude. They can't muster enough strong vision for the future. They feel as though they're surrendering or waiting for some inciting incident to take place that's going to move them forward in their story. Right? So they get stuck. They get hesitant. They're lost. They're adrift. They're out in the ocean with no sail, no motor, no oars, and they're just out there, you know, floating around, looking around, don't know what the hell's going on. Um, and, and so what do we do? We'll ignore it. Ignore it. Let's just go back to the day-to-day, -day, get in there, do the grind, uh, show up with my baseball bat, and see how many home runs I can hit, right? That's what happens. So when you look at the motivational, the uh, value matrix, look at what's going on here. Empathy. They're somewhat trusting. Productivity. Completely remiss. Structured. Overly structured. Self-esteem. Flawed. Job function. Frustrated. Commitment, undecided. They don't know if they're committed to their work, if they're committed to their wife, if they're committed to the kids. They don't know what, there's no commitment level because they don't know what's going on. Um, so, when we go back up to the executive summary, um, uh, dominating, I don't know what's going inside, so I'll achieve everything I can in the world and I'm loyal to this. And in myself, I'm completely uncommitted to it, so I don't pay attention to it. Uh, so, very, very, very powerful. Now, I've been coaching this person for over four months, and this past week was the first week in over four months that they came on the call and said it was, every day was good. Four months, four months of talking every single week, and this past week was the first week where all pistons seemed to be firing in the right direction with work, wife, kids. Okay? We got six more to go. Six more to go. So, this is why, you know, people talk about there's an assault on assessing out there in the world right now. Oh, assessments, you can't believe it. You know, that is pure, pure Hogwash. Hogwash. I can't predict your performance, but I can tell you how you're thinking, and if I know you're thinking a certain way, I know how that's going to turn out. I'm not measuring your level of skill. This person is very skilled at what they do. I'm not measuring their uh, intelligence. I don't know this person's IQ. I'm not measuring their education, their level of education. I don't know what that is. But I do know this. They don't see themselves. They don't see their flaws. They don't see their goodness. I know that all they want is to get behind the wheel of the car or they're not getting in it. I do know that, right? There's a lot I can know and I did post a list of these things on LinkedIn at one point. Um, so anyway, um, there you have it. Uh, so uh, a lot of people, you know, will private message me, what is it you actually do? You know, this kind of a thing. Well, that's what I do. Um, uh, we do this for corporations. We've had clients in over 18 countries in the last 16 years. And people stay with us like 10 years, uh, 12 years, um, 8 years, 5 years, 4 years. Um, and the only reason why they're not using me anymore is because they don't need to. And when there's an important situation that comes up, every single one of them calls back. Why? Because my system, known as human acumen, is reliable. It's powerful and it gets us what we need to know in order to get you where you need to go. Well, that's it. I know that was long, uh, but there you have it. Till next time, Steve Sisler, talk to you. Bye.